coming in at the last minute there. A little late on cue, David. Maybe you can just be on time. <laughs> uh, what's our Thursday drink, please? Well, a lot of people this weekend or next weekend might be uh, thinking about doing a little wassail to the apple trees. So why not a nice pint of cider or a half, if you prefer? OK, all right, very good. I am going to wassail a little bit later wassail? on. Wassail, yeah. yeah. So uh, today's confession and the winner of the smart speaker uh, goes to Jerry who sends in tonight's tale. Simon the Confessor, brother from another gutter, and draconian do-gooder, Sister Susan. Yep. Okay. <laughs> a while back, you read out a confession concerning popcorn trickery in the cinema. We did. Mm. I, too, have a popcorn theatre confession, but mine is just from just before the last Christmas we've had. This December just gone, my wife and I took two of our grandchildren to New York Ooh. to see the famous... The world-famous Radio City Christmas Spectacular, starring the equally world-famous Rockettes, who are said to be the world's longest chorus line. Wow. wow. This wow. goes on for miles. Yeah, that's good for them. Only some of them can fit on the stage, but they keep on going. <laughs> Having booked the best seats in the house, we took our place at the end. These are the grandparents to have. Clearly. <coughs> Off to see the Rockettes. Yes. We took our place at the end of our row in plenty of time. An older gent made his way along from the opposite end of the row and sat next to me. Being a friendly American from Florida, he instantly struck up conversation with me, during which he explained that his wife was looking for refreshments at the theatre bar. Now, the Radio City seats nearly 5,000 people, so it was clear she would be some time. Meanwhile, my granddaughter had opened her American-sized plastic bucket of popcorn <laughs> and was tucking into its contents. Popcorn is hard to resist, Father Simon, and each time chatty neighbour drew breath, I found myself reaching over to pinch a handful from the bucket. Presently, a family of three with a larger version lookalike of Dwayne the Rock Johnson bringing up the rear came along the row in front of us. Dwayne sitting as directly as one can in staggered seating right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Marvellous. Now, remember, everyone had come in from the bitter New York winter and was bundled in seasonal pullovers and coats. The Rock, however, was sporting a tight-fitting grey <laughs> T-shirt that not only displayed an impressive collection of tattoos, but also his impressive physique. Yeah. Standing up to allow another family to reach their seats in our row, I was reminded of Saturday Kids Club at the Odeon when you could sit up on the edge of your flip seat... <clears throat> before sliding into place as it tipped back down. Still worked 60 years later, and I had a little chuckle to myself. Right on time, a pair of massive Wurlitzer organs appeared from the sides of the auditorium to introduce the show as the house lights faded. <coughs> Excuse me. While my Floridian neighbour looked this way and that for his wife, everyone else settled back in their seats and had the bright idea of tipping a sizable pile of my granddaughter's popcorn into the dustbin-shaped lid of the bucket to save from reaching over. At that moment, the Floridian spotted his wife in the aisle to our right and gave a discreet for an American wave in her direction. Hey, baby doll, over here! <laughs> ah, yes! He was in the mafia. Yeah. Still bundled in her winter coat, she started to shuffle towards her spouse, and we four on the end of the row all stood up to make way. Clutching two coats, scarves and hats in one hand, I managed to hold the lid full of popcorn safely out of the way in my other hand as the ample Mrs. Florida 1961 squeezed past. Of course, as I stood, so my seat had flipped up behind me. Reliving my Odeon past, I thought it best to sit on the edge and wait for it to lower me into the correct sitting position. Not the best idea I could have had. Without warning, the seat crashed from vertical to horizontal in a nanosecond, shooting the popcorn straight up, only to shower down on Dwayne Johnson's bald head. <laughs> Most of them bounced off his bonds like ping-pong balls. Oh, well, okay. A few magically stuck there, held no doubt by his copious sweating. Oh, that seems unnecessary. He jumped from his seat, scattering popcorn far and wide. He turned round to see what had happened, face like fury. Mm. All he saw was an innocent child with her crumpled grandpa intently watching the show whilst holding an empty lid from a bucket of popcorn. A small child and an old guy were clearly not worth bothering with, so he just squinted Clint Eastwood-like. It was a look that said, Do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> Another, another voice. Another wow, American this is voice. So good. This and is the, excellent. When the lights finally came up at the end of a fantastic spectacular, I glanced down to see the carpet covered in popcorn. There was nothing to do but ignore it, whilst feeling sorry for the between show cleaners. You could have always just 
you know, a bit up, Jerry. Yeah. There was nothing to do but ignore... Oh, I read that bit. The Floridian was also looking disgustedly at the mess and turned his back to leave without a word considering how chatty he'd been previously. Brother Simon, I don't seek forgiveness from the Floridian. After all, he and his wife, had been, if they'd been more organised, she would have been in place before the start of the show and I would have uh, not had to stand up. And I don't forget, and don't forget, I did lose a lot of popcorn on the way. <laughs> Plus, they were in the mafia. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that was true. I also I don't, don't really seek forgiveness from Dwayne the Rock Johnson lookalike guy, as I'm sure I could have taken him. Oh, yeah. I actually seek yeah. forgiveness from my 11-year-old granddaughter who stoically had to ignore Dwayne's questioning look. Mm. Didn't complain that I subsequently had to steal more handfuls of her popcorn, which as a result eventually ran out long before the end of the show. Thanks for a great show. The highlight of my radio listening day. Well, corn-popping Jerry... Uh, signing off with his confession. Let's uh, check out with the voice of authority and wisdom, Sister Susie. Oh, well, Jerry, there's a few things here that I, 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 I'd like to question because you said you only took two of your grandchildren to New York. What about the other ones that you left back home? I don't know. This is just a bit mean. Um, also, I think you've just just don't like The Rock. Who doesn't like The Rock? Mm. Um, and I just can't forgive you because you just created a mess and you didn't clean up after yourself. So Well, that's the thing. If you spill popcorn, you clear it up. That's the bottom line. At least, like, move it into a little pile. Also, so that's what the bucket's case. for, is to sh shovel it all... Either the what? ...back into the bucket, or you could just shovel it into another aisle mm. and look as though it's someone else's. Seems before. unlikely. <laughs> Uh, brother from another guy. Uh, well, saying? first of all, I don't think the need to forgive uh, Dwayne lookalike. Uh, no one needs to see your tats, Dwayne. No one's impressed with your physique. Um, uh, <laughs> well, also, I uh, well, no, I don't I, think I they are. Be. Don't think they are. <laughs> uh, also, uh, there is a special circle in hell reserved for those people who decide to go to the bar and then come in after the performance has started. Unlucky sunshine, the show has started. You're watching from the sidelines. I've only done it once, but I had a very very good reason for being late so and so it only applies to me and for that reason i am going to forgive